Hello, friend. How are you? I know it's a late night. Not super, super late, but it's later than I have been lately. Um, thank you for your patience and not abandoning me while I've had my migraine I've been fighting. My head's better right now. I can think and I can actually feel like I can hold something and maybe write. Um, Tuesday, it was hitting while I was in ladies' Bible class and it just seemed like it kept going down and down and down and it is finally right now where I can talk and think and speak and don't feel like I'm saying the wrong thing entirely. So I'm going to try painting some. I'm trying to decide if I want to do my big Texas cutout or if I want to do a couple of cards. So I wrote in there I was going to paint on my big cutout, so I think I might just go ahead and do on my big cutout. But I'm just, whoo, I didn't realize I had some of that in there. Okay, so I'm going to set that there, and I may do those another night. Tomorrow night at 8 Central, 9 Eastern, I was trying to remember Tammy's time, Tammy from Painted Soul Studio. And I are going to be painting a painted prayer. And if you've never seen one of those before, um, we take scripture or words. It can, doesn't have to be a prayer necessarily, but you take a word that you need to see. You need to hear words, scripture. I prefer whenever I'm thinking painted prayer, I always think of scripture. I go straight to the book and I do pure scripture there. Um, you generally are going to paint something in the background, but your focus, what you're going to want to see and focus on is going to be uh, the scripture, the thought. Um, I've seen it done with just regular stencils like mandalas and stuff like that as the background and different colors and splashes and things. I've seen them done with well, I used different stencils. I used a hummingbird and some other things, and I wrote the words that I wanted to say. It was a question I was asking myself, some thoughts. Apparently, it was from some song, but I didn't know the song. I just thought it was a good thoughts there. Um, I guess the wall over there would kind of, with, with the butterfly, with the words from the song, could kind of sort of be considered a painted prayer. It's got a picture. It's got something to it, but it also has words that make you think. When I think praying the prayer, I think kind of subdued, though, not necessarily at, well, not subdued. I think the focus is all on the words and what we're supposed to be, what you, what it's supposed to be bringing to mind versus that doesn't necessarily bring to mind immediately. The, the butterfly makes me think certain things and then I read the words and it makes me think of a song and, and, and versus it just being like, if I read a scripture on something, it helps me to bring my mind straight to the scripture and how is it used? What's the context of that scripture? and What does it mean? Uh, how does it apply to us today? Um, and making sure that it hasn't been taken out of context when, when I use it. So, um, so I think I'm going to switch camera views. That's tomorrow night at 8 Central. Tammy and I will be painting together. Um, and we would love to have you join us. If you choose to paint with us, which you would be more than welcome to, uh, paint along with us, I would suggest, okay, let me switch that back for just a second because I don't feel like you need to see my hands on. Uh, I would suggest a canvas probably bigger than an eight by 10, but I don't know. Okay. That one, the big snowman there is 24 by 36, 24 by 36. I haven't felt the need to do a painted prayer that big yet. I've done them. Mr. Al is a 16 by 20 or Ms. Al is a 16 by 20 and those I've done several of that are painted prayers with 
that you have room to put your words on. Where is my painted prayer? I don't have mine up there right now. I don't know why. Not real sure. You could do it on other surfaces if I wanted to put a painted prayer on the Texas. I could put a painted prayer on the shape. Um, you could do it on a wood cutout, a circle, or, or whatever, a surfboard. Um, I'm trying to think, though. Um, even like this wood thing right here is kind of the, the thought of a painted prayer. It's not painted. It's resined and it's deep. Well, it's sort of painted. It was a resin kit. And this is all resin and filled in with resin and sequins right here. This was painted on by me. But the, the concept is you want something that draws, draws your mind to what your point is. So be beautiful, you. Be beautiful. Be you. Be beautiful. Beautiful. Um, could put scriptures on something like this. You could draw something similar to this. Um, and do something like that for a painted prayer. I would, I've done an 8 by 10 painted prayer before, or the smaller one, like the little snowman right there, and the shoe, and the cross, and the guitar, and the Caesar the puppy are all 8 by 10s. They're smaller. They're not going to be as, unless you're going to say he cried, they're not really going to make that you're not going to be able to have as much detail in them. So I would say an 11 by 14, 12 by 16, or a 16 by 20, something along those lines, or a mixed media paper. You can do them on mixed media paper too, and they come in the various sizes. I've got 9 by 12 uh, watercolor paper, mixed media paper, um, 11 by 14 mixed media paper. Actually, I don't think that's mixed media paper. That was the dark one, and it was... A different color but anyway you could do it on you need a surface that is paintable <laughs> let's put that on a paintable surface um ooh. i just saw a ceramic tile sitting over there big 10 by 10 12 by 12 one i might be painting on the tile tomorrow i have to think of mine but you need that you need your color choice for background and again, there's no right or wrong rhyme or reason to this. You just are putting on what you want. I'm going to say that typically I put one color or an ombre, like fading from a dark to a light or a light to a dark, coming down or going up, whichever way you want it to go. Um, I guess you could even go across if you wanted. Um, and then take a few stencils and go around giving some element of some sort around the edges. I don't necessarily fill the whole thing. You could do a stencil as long as it's not too, I would not do a buffalo plaid check and then try to write over it. Does that make sense? Uh, I would not want to put a buffalo check, a dark, sharp, contrasting pattern down and then try to write words over it and then anybody be able to read and and pull from the from the words. So I would suggest you get a canvas or surface that you wanted to paint and three to five colors, one being sharp contrast to the others, like either a black or a white to write your words on your light or your dark background colors and then a couple of your favorite stencils whatever they may be whatever colors and shapes they may be and then be ready to come paint with us at eight o'clock central tomorrow hey miss madeline how are you tonight i think i'm fixing to paint on i'm gonna paint some wildflowers your flowers this morning were so cute I think I'm going to paint some tonight. And I'm going to do, I don't want the antique white, at least not yet. I'm going to do some, uh, oh, and I'm using folk art tonight, y'all. Look at me blue and some titanium white. You don't necessarily have to use folk art 
or I am so glad to be able to paint today. I'm just hoping I can get through this. So far, so good. I'm not going to complain. So I was like, I, I said I was going to do the cutout, and then I saw the cards, and I thought, oh, you could paint on the cards, and that could be small. So tomorrow night, I was saying, whenever I think you guys came on, um, y'all say hi and tell me where you're watching from when y'all join me, if you don't mind. Um, I'm getting a sponge and kind of wringing it out a little bit. I don't want it sopping wet, but I do want it moist and, and ready to go. Was that tomorrow night at... 8 p.m. Central, Tammy from Paint Us All Studio is going to be joining me on, well, we're going to be broadcasting to both pages. Let's just put it that way. Um, Tammy and I will be painting some painted prayers together. Okay, so I'm going to take this sponge and I'm just going to kind of do some colors, some the blue and the white, and I'm just kind of sponging them. Whoop, I'm going to try and get this where y'all can see. I'm just kind of dabbing. They're going to blend a little, but I'm trying to get the paint on my sponge separately. Does that make sense? And I'm going to scoot this back over. And y'all, if you have a canvas and you don't want to, or uh, if you don't like having to do a lot of heavy duty cleanup, Glad Press and Seal typically sticks pretty well to some of these things. I'm not really fond of having to throw away a lot of foam plates. How great you're painting together with Tammy. Yeah, Tammy and I have been trying to paint together monthly for several months now on each other's pages. So, uh, from Madeline, I have a post that I need to share with you. Uh, if you're wanting a little exposure, you need to go. Oh, I need to figure out where it's at. Hang on just a second. Let me put this down. Y'all bear with me just a minute. Business never ceases, does it? <laughs> Let me see which way would be faster. I think this way would be faster. I'm going to get a link for any of my creative friends. If you paint, if you sew, if you do any of the fun creative stuff and you would like to get a little more exposure for your business, you would like to be in front of a bigger audience. My friend Tammy of Painted Soul Studio is, Painted Soul Studio, yes, that's the right one, is opening a group and she's looking for people who would like to present in it. Creative Journal Journey Presenters. Okay. And I'm going to put the link. Copy. Copy. Oh, please let me get the right link. And I'm going to put this in here. And Madeline, I want, if you're interested in getting some exposure, if you want. To have the opportunity or anybody else y'all i'm not just talking to madeline madeline i've seen your work i think it would be great and i think if you're not already in there that you need to consider doing it right now it's free we're just trying to get started and get some opportunities for everybody to 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 get in front of a bigger audience you know you bring your audience to the group and then we all get to see each other and share and build and help each other grow and help give each other pointers and things like that as we're going through this and it just I've seen it do some pretty awesome things here and there with different groups. And she's just wanting to get some of this going. So this would be a great opportunity for you and for anybody else. And, you know, she's even looking for people who cook. So please, Madeline, feel free to share the Creative Journey presenters opportunity or just share the Painted Soul Painted Soul journey cre creative journey group because there's going to be there's two groups technically one where she gives gets your schedule and gets you on the schedule and everything else that's what we're calling the presenters group and then there's kind of an audience group where we're going to talk to everybody and do our presentations as we go through the month but we're getting ready to get started and get ramped up and we would love to have all of you with us or have you, especially Madeline, because I've seen you. It's good, good stuff, good stuff. Okay. I think this is as far down as I want to bring the blue and white. Right? Let's get a little bit more white in here. And we'll do some white.
Okay, and I'm going to put just a little bit more of the blue here and there. Try not to like, the wood absorbs it really fast, y'all. Just saying. The wood really sucks your color, the paint right in, and just like absorbs it fast. Except when it's already got a dot of paint on it. And I don't even know where that dot of paint came from, but it's got a weird dot of paint right there that doesn't want to cover up. So, <laughs> yeah, thank you. I have really, I've learned recently that I really like for a, a fast way to do a, a nice background, clouds, skies, you take your sponge and you just work it in circles. I try to work in just one direction. I'm not really good at it. Because, see, I'm already going back the other way. But you can go whichever way works best for you. But I try not to cover. And I don't want it to be all the same shade either. I want it to have some of those dark streaks in it. Because, you know, the skies do have those darker streaks and those lighter streaks in it. And I just have really, really discovered that I really like how that turns out. Okay, so for some grass and some general background... I have classic green here. I don't think that's what I want though. I have some sap green, which is really a nice one. I have a citrus green and fresh foliage. Let's just pour. Okay, I'm gonna try and pull this your way so y'all can see where I'm pouring it out. Here is my fresh foliage. Here is our citrus green. And there's not loads of difference, but this one's definitely more of a pastel green. This one's got a lot more yellow in it. And then here is our sap green, which is kind of dark. Not so Oh, and then I've got thicket if we want a little thicket. Do I want thicket? No, I think I'm going to put the green in here right now and I'm going to leave the thicket alone. So this is just classic green right here. And it's pretty much a classic green, shade of green. So what I'm going to do is because I've already got blue on my fingers here, I'm just not going to stress myself out. And I'm going to take this end of my sponge, this side of my sponge, and I'm just going to kind of dip. in all four colors. And I'm just going to kind of sponge it. And I'm going to daub it up and down. Okay. I'm going to kind of grab a light and a dark and a dark and a light and just kind of pounce them. I'm going to try not to leave big chunks of color. <laughs> kind of rocking it a little bit as I'm going. I do kind of want to get a good color base coverage down. So I probably ought to kind of go in a semi-straight line across my horizon here. What do you think? Just so I know where I'm going. Because that blue looks a little thin right there right now. Which tells me I should probably, before I get too far along with this blue, with this green, go back with the blue and the white. And then if you want some clouds that are a little more softer, you can take some white and just kind of punch it in there and then kind of, or kind of do just... Ooh, I got green in here. Well, that was not my best move. Oh, well. We'll just have to clean it up and go on, won't we? I'm just trying to pull some of that green out of there. <laughs> I don't think we have a lot of green in the sky. I mean, we might. I mean, the pollen is in the air right now, so... <laughs> But to kind of keep some of that. 
that you can sponge it, like pounce it, and then you can smooth out the edges depending on the look you're wanting at the edges. This is still kind of a lighter color than I'm wanting. So I'm going to kind of lightly pull that out because that color is just really soaking in there. I should have sprayed it, I guess, with a little spray paint just to get a good primer down. Okay, so now back to my four colors and I'm trying not to drag it through them. I'm grabbing my four colors. Oh, that one got really close. Okay. So we're just going to kind of sponge around here. Make sure we're sponging some of the really light color, some of the really dark color. And this makes for a beautiful start to a fresh background that is not that looks like it's a more detailed background than it actually is. Because it looks like we've got this beautiful field over here. And what have we really got? We've got a bunch of sponge, sponge painting. But it looks like we've got a field with different colors, the lights and the darks and all mixing in together. And they look just... To me, they look pretty good. They look well blended, not over blended because it's not all one shade. When I look in the grass, I don't see just one shade of green. I see the dark. I see the light. I see some of the ground behind it. I see sometimes it's dead grass in patches around it. So it's nice to be able to see all of it looking some of the depth that's shown in there. And there's our sky. All right, so for our blue bonnets, I'm going to use Ink Spot. I will probably have a little bit more of this lovely little blue, and I will definitely have some more titanium white. And then I'm trying to figure out which orange is bright enough. I guess I'll use the pure orange and maybe, did I get two terracotta? No, I got Pueblo and terracotta. Um, I think I'm gonna do these two for my paint brushes, Indian paint brushes. These are, I remember growing up with um, Indian paint brushes all in the yard. The whole front yard would be covered in them. And there would be blue bonnets and Indian paint brushes pretty much everywhere we looked, everywhere we went. They were all over the place all the time. I am going to use like my number six flat. It's really small, but it's because we're doing this smaller area here. And that's still too wet to do it. So hang on just a second. I'm going to dry this. I will mute you, ask your questions, and I will answer them when I get back. I'm going to be real honest, Madeline. I don't know if blue bonnets have a very strong smell. I'm going to look really quick because I'm curious now because I, I've been around them all my life. Let 
Many people say they give off no scent at all, while others have have a few have described them as sickly sweet. The seeds have a hard outer shell to protect them and dry. Um, it's a faint sweet smell, but I don't think it's like a really strong. I, we've had them in fields all around our houses, and, but I've never had them in, grow in my yard before. Now, my mom has. My mom actually found some plants and got them to grow and reproduce at a nursery a couple of years ago, and she can't find them in any nurseries anymore. But every time she's planted seeds, she hasn't really had them come up. But the fact that these were blooming and then they came back, she was really excited about. So was I. Um, now she hasn't gotten my grandfather's place has since been bought and they've had several people. Uh, they've had a couple of different people, couples live in it. Uh, since he passed, the guy that, across the street that bought it has rented it to a couple of different families. And, uh, It's been interesting to me the the they mow over all those pretty little wildflowers out there. And I'm like, look, look save yourself a little time. They'll die out. And you'll have plenty of beautiful patches of orange in the pasture, but they keep mowing over. And I'm like, y'all don't understand. It's pretty. But they don't seem to think it's as pretty. So Okay, so what I'm going to try and do is, and I'm, I think I may practice here because this might actually still be too big for what I'm thinking. The wild, the paint brushes are just kind of like, and this is bigger than I'm wanting them to be. So let me, ooh, let me see what I can do. I may just use my number one liner. Let me find it. My liner. What number are you? Yep, you're my liner. Okay, and I'm gonna put a lid. I'm gonna put my my main orange in there, and then I'm gonna kind of side load some of that per, that orange or darker orange there. And we're just gonna kind of start doing little bits. I'm gonna put a dab of white in there if we can. Need a lot more orange for that little dab of white. I don't know if you've ever seen the fields of them, the pictures of them, but if you hang on. P O N N E T S. And Indian paint brushes. Yes, yes. Okay, so I am going to share this screen with you just really quickly. Share screen, share that one, and I'm going to make that one big for just a second. Okay, so I'm going to make this full screen as soon as I remember how. There we go. This is kind of what I grew up with in the yards and in the pastures around our house. This was just the sea of just fun. It was just so fun to go running through them. We, we always stopped and I always stopped and took pictures of my kids in them when they were little, when I could, when I found spots around our house. They just, they were so fun and so let me oh that's probably gonna open an ad sorry y'all great big canvas okay this is somebody's painting that they're selling this has got a few blue bonnets and a really it looks like maybe some different color lupins in there because i think blue bonnets are a lupin and then the others but anyway that's not what we're here for we're here for me to paint but I was just going to say, that's kind of what we're looking at when I say blue bonnets and, and wild, and the, when I say Texas wildflowers, gorgeous. <laughs> I, I always thought they were very gorgeous. I always thought they were, they didn't have an overly strong smell. So I could enjoy, if that makes sense, being around it and it not being just super crazy strong. 
so I'm just kind of drawing and I guess it doesn't really matter because these are going to be a whole bunch of smaller littler things and not necessarily be overly visible and I'm going to go ahead and pull these all back down because I'm done mostly with the with the background so we're just going to take and just start drawing in some orange little streaks we don't want them too long we have lupin flowers grow wild here in california see we i've seen i for the longest in my life i never saw them any color but blue but now i've seen them in maroon like maroon like i was totally blown off the wall whenever i saw them they were like maroon and i was like I've never seen them that color before. So let's see if this side, uh, maybe I do it with just a side. I'm not liking the edge of that one. It just doesn't seem like it's doing what I want it to do. So let's see if we can keep it skinny and small enough in here. Okay, this is how I do mine, okay? These are not necessarily what anybody else has taught me to do. I just kind of picked up how they kind of look uh -huh. to me whenever I look at them in a painting full, in a field full of color. And we're probably going to want to draw a couple of them closer up that are a little more distinct. But I'm trying to keep some of these that are further back a little less distinct because we're going to give it the impression of being a field that is not all just sitting right up here in our laps, right? Three or four really good streaks here is pretty good. And then I'm going to add a dot of white in there and kind of I don't want it to be not showing up, and it shows up just a little bit better with that white in there. All right. Reload. Okay. And I think what I'm going to do... So I'm going to get my little scruffy brush here. He's a little bitty flat brush that's been kind of short, cut off real short. He's actually a scruffy brush. Um, when you buy it from one stroke painting, that's what they're called is a scruffy. And I'm going to get just a little bit of color on here, the lighter and the darker. And I'm just going to kind of put some color in here and tap it about. I like this brush because it helps you to add, and it's how I do backgrounds a lot of times rather than using the, spank, the sponge. Thank you. I'm just going to add some hints of orange so that we don't have to go in and try and draw every little flower perfectly because we know we're not going to manage to do that. Not if we want it to look kind of like that picture and kind of have just the, the rolling orange and white and blue and white and the color and the everything. So I'm, I'm just getting a little bit at a time. Definitely offloading a little bit of it. I don't want it to be too much of one shade of orange or too much of the other. And I'm just kind of coming around here and there. And we're going to just tap in. I don't want a lot of it. I don't want it to be like a bit. I'm not. I've got another brush that's like this, that's bigger, that we could use to kind of help fill in some of those spaces. But I'm afraid if we use it, it will be too much color and too big a chunk instead of the hints of flowers here and there, because these each could be kind of a the hints of flowers where it's not a big chunk. Okay, hmm. now I'm going to go ahead and wipe that out. I really would rather wash it out, but I don't happen to have another scruffy, and I really don't want to use it wet. I don't like using a scruffy wet. 
So what I'm going to do before I start on any more flowers, I'm going to get a little bit of our blue and a little bit of our white, and I'm going to pounce them in for our blue bonnets. We're going to start adding some of that color for the blue bonnets around. You kind of want the white to be up on the top here. Because the blue bonnets have the white on the top, so you want to make sure when you're pouncing that you've got white at the top. You gotta tap it hard enough. Oh, that's doing better than I thought it was gonna do. Let's just put it that way. I'm excited now. Let's get some white on there and some blue in there. What number size is my scruffy? This is a quarter inch scruffy. The other one that I have is a three quarter inch and he's just big. And to me, I think he would just be overpowering for this project. See how we're getting the look and the feel of loads and loads of flowers in this field. But we're not having to draw every one of them in. I'm going to put a little bit more blue on here this time. And a little bit less white. Not a lot, but a little bit. Whoop. Well, kind of got to get some white on it. I stuck it in something backwards and got all the blue off the tip of it. This almost might be a good way to do just your, your blue bonnets themselves because they're the lupins and stuff and they kind of come down and that gives you a good way to kind of do some of them right there. You can get the colors on there, right? I keep turning mine around backwards. That's my problem. And I keep, and I'm like, okay, stop, Steph. You need it with this side up and that side down. <laughs> All right, we're going to do some gentle tapping. Whoop, well, maybe not such gentle tapping. I'm just going to tap away. I think it's gentle, but there's apparently enough color that was right there that it was like, nope, it's not going to be just a little bitty bit there. It's going to be some flower. <laughs> All right. The bristles look like they're thick. They are. They're like a flat brush. Now, see, I did something when I was trying to make mine and some of these got laid down. So I had to kind of go through with a, one of my little styluses and pull it up so that it would stand up straight again. Cause it was kind of messed up where it was laying too, but they're, they are, and they're a different, they're like a natural hair bristle where, where the rest of the brushes that, uh, the one stroke people Donna Dewberry uses are a synthetic bristle. They, these are like the natural hair and they do it they do do the job very differently. Um, I, it, it's interesting how different it really is. Okay. But yeah, they're, they, they are pretty. Okay. Let me get a little more blue in there. Cause that didn't have to seem like it has any blue at all. Well, God has some blue. All right. Now, this is actually done fairly well drawing in some larger blue bonnets down here. I was impressed with how it turned out there. Um, I'll probably still try doing my my uh, 
liner brush and playing with it a little bit for some, but this is definitely giving us a little bit of a, a difference here. And considering I wasn't going for a really perfect field of 110 flowers that you can definitely see as this particular type of flower. I just wanted the, the colors and the feel of, to me, this is spring in Texas. This is spring in Texas. I don't know if in other parts of Texas this is what they think of, but from where I grew up, where I've lived, around the areas where we've lived in Texas my whole life. This this is what I think of when I think of spring in Texas. That and lots of pollen. <laughs> lots of pollen. Especially the last couple of years, the pollen has gotten really bad. All right, so I think I'm going to get just a little bit of blue on here and not hardly any more white. And kind of tap the bottoms on some of these that are a little whiter. And kind of drag some of them down a little bit if I can. Because they're white on the top, just not necessarily all the way down. So there we go. Especially these up front. We need them to be... Hey, Tammy, how are you, friend? I posted your link for your group so that Madeline could maybe see about checking it out and seeing if that was what she wanted to do. I watched Madeline with her painting this morning. I was finally able to catch a live. Y'all, my notifications, I don't care what I sign up for. It does not tell me when people are live anymore. I have to know you're going live just to catch your lives. Actually, I'm on the far eastern side of the state. I'm on the eastern edge of the state. Uh, I currently live about... 30 minutes from Shreveport, Louisiana, but we grew up about two hours from here and about an hour southeast of Dallas, southwest of Dallas, southwest of Dallas, yes. Um, so just in the Dallas-Fort Worth area of Texas and then uh, I bought the cutout at Walmart like several years ago, but uh, I've seen them at Hobby Lobby and I've seen them a couple of other places. So you might check at Hobby Lobby and Michaels. Michaels, Michaels is where I saw them. Michaels is where I saw some. I don't know if they were this size for sure or not, Tammy, but um, I'm loving how this scruffy brush is doing my blue bonnets. I'm just saying, y'all, these look like some really good blue bonnets. I'm just saying. I'm really liking it. Okay, so I'm going to wipe this out again. I'm going to use a wet wipe to wipe it out because I'm going back to the orange because I've got a lot of blue bonnets and I'm not seeing that much of my paint brushes. And I would like a little bit more in there of those. Pretty sure Michael's is where I saw the cutouts, but I did buy these in, at Walmart couple of years ago. Neat picture. Love the blue bonnets. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you. How are you tonight, Carolyn? How was your reunion? Was that today at lunch with all your people from, from school? Okay. I'm going to drag, try and do a little bit more. I may need to try and do a little fan brush to get some more of those that are a little more detailed and colored up close. Yes. Great. Okay, good. I'm glad you had fun at lunch. I saw your picture that you posted on your page and I was like, oh, I love it. So fun. Carolyn went to lunch with some friends from school today. It's been a, it was a fun lunch. Okay, y'all. I 
I think that's about as much damage as that one's going to do. Now I've got to figure out how I'm going to draw me these the, st the tops of these little paint brushes because they don't want to do right. So far, so good. I think I'm going to put home up here. Just not real sure yet. I know it needs words. Maybe I'll put welcome. What do y'all think? What should I write up here? What are your suggestions for writing up here that would go with this? Because this screams spring to me because this is the springtime flowers. Because it doesn't take them long to be gone. My son's birthday, my oldest son's birthday is three weeks from mine. On the way home from the hospital, I said, we should stop and get pictures. And then it's like, I learned how to crop pictures and put on Facebook. Pretty girl. <laughs> you're doing great, girl. You know, I may have to hire you if you get good at it. Cropping pictures and putting them on Facebook. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to draw a few kind of streaks up, kind of because they're not supposed to be like perfect ones, but I wanted to have a little bit more definition than the color and just the splats. I'm going to give it just a little bit of oh, white, the orange in there, the white. We're not giving any of them distinct stems or anything else. We're just kind of having them pull up a little bit and sticking up. There we go. I don't want them to be specific. Now tomorrow night, Tammy and I are painting on, my pa on our pages together. It'll be on both our pages so you can tune in e to either Painted Soul or Escape and Paint. I say Escape and Paint since you're here tonight, but Tammy will be on Painted Soul. <laughs> um, but if you'll come hang out with us, we're going to do what we call a painted prayer. I don't know. I guess we could give it a different name if you wanted, but I kind of spent some time at the beginning of this video, if y'all missed it, talking about what a painted prayer is. It's kind of like, it can be scripture. It doesn't have to be scripture, but it could be scripture. And that's probably what I'm going to do is a scripture. And then I've got to figure out what what I want it to be, what scripture I want it to be. All right. What do y'all think? What words do I need to put on here? Y'all haven't told me any words yet. In fact, I may have to wait till tomorrow to try and do it because I'm like not the greatest at freehand in letters. It does not typically go well. Home sweet home. Welcome. Let me think. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and rinse this one off. And I'm going to go around my edges with the greens. I think I'm going to just kind of mix the two darkest greens around this bottom part because I think it needs the edges done. Especially if it's potentially going to go on a door hanger or on a wreath or anything like that. If it's going to be sitting where it's going to be seen, we definitely need these edges done. Zoe came out of a room. The grand pup is here today. The, the, the grand pup that visits is here for the evening. Um... His daddy's at work, so you can hear when she opens the door, though, because they all three dogs come running out of the room. Because I had him in her room with her while I, I was live. I apologize if I was being loud. Caesar no, no, decided no. to put his uh, arm up, up on my my neck and lay across my neck and chest. Um, that's a little rough. I know. I think he was just trying to cuddle with me, just from the way he was acting, like he was trying to snuggle into me. But yeah. he moved his arm and his like the elbow He's on his rough. arm. Yeah. And I was like, he didn't mean to, but I was like, I can't breathe. And I'm and I was <laughs> laughing because he was messing around earlier. And then though he got off me where Rosie kind of shoved him off. And then they started fighting right on top of me. Oh, bless it. And I was like, no, 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 no. I can't tell whether to laugh or just freak out. 
<laughs> Just open the door and take him to the bathroom. It'll I be know, okay. That's what I did. That'll diffuse the situation. I know. I just kind of snuggled my way out. He finally moved as I was trying to get off my bed. Yeah. And so I just kind of got off my bed, opened the door, and I still left bag in my room. So. Oh, you might want to go let her out. And let her I did. I did. Oh, Before okay. I came in here, I was like, oh, I was like, where's Maggie? And I was like, oh, I left her in my room. I was like, oh. I forgot she was in my room because she was hiding from those two. She was on the bed for a while, but then she was just like, I'm just going to hide now because yeah. they're getting rough. They kept going. They just chill make out noise and rough. she wants to chill. Well, it's like they would chill out for a few minutes, and then the next thing you know, they're fighting, and they're stepping on okay. me or Maggie or both. And I'm like, poor Maggie. She's like me. She just wants to She just wants to cuddle with she one She just wants to be chilled and left alone. To chill and be left alone, huh? All right. All right. So, I need a little bit more of this dark green. There we go. Whoa. Well, I think I got enough sap green now. <laughs> God's artwork. Oh, that'd be good on there. Yeah, it would. God's artwork. Mm, might have to do that. So, Tammy, how are mom and dad tonight? He did eventually get over his shingles, right? I knew he had them right after he got his vaccine or right around when he got his vaccine. I can't remember if he's over them or not. All right, you know, I'm just, this, this part of this wood is just very thin, very porous. And soaking it all up, and it's like, okay, it doesn't really want to move very well. For God's masterpiece, that works too. Does, does. Sleeping, still feeling, the, he's still feeling the pain from him. Mm. Someone said to take St. John's Fort. Hang on. Let me find my phone and I'll look at the messages. Because um, another friend of ours, well, Carolyn's husband has possibly has shingles right now. And then her sister's husband got them right after he got his second one, second shot. And it was really bad. Um, I was told... That calcium and St. John's wort would help. Somebody else said. Oh, I don't have it written down what it was. It was some kind of a. Hmm, I'll just have to figure it out. Later. I'll ask my other friend to get, get it back to you. Yeah, that's not fun. It doesn't just go away really quickly. It does not go away real quickly. Carolyn, I will try to remember to have a roller ball for you Sunday. If I remember of some oils for him that might help. I don't know. I know when I first started putting them on my back, it ended up making me feel like I was worse than I was before, but at least I wasn't like miserable itching but that doesn't mean anything but it was getting rid of the shingles so it was drying it up did you ever figure out if you had any uh tammy what should i write on here what's your vote carolyn says either god's artwork or god's masterpiece madeline what do you think yes if you're watching i'm probably going to call you out and ask you <laughs> ask you for your He does. His pain, back pain is better. Still itching, but looking better. I think it's a light case since he had the vaccine several years back. Well, that, that would be good. What's funny is every time I get a vaccine, I end up getting sick with whatever it is I got the vaccine for. 
every time I've stopped taking vaccines for several reasons, but that's one of them. <laughs> I'm like, look, I don't want to get... Okay, I knew I should have done this side before I did anything else, and I didn't kick my honey. God's masterpiece. Okay. okay, see I'm blending the green to the blue where it's going up around the, the sky. And I'm coming around the corner here. If I can get it in focus, it's like right up my nose and it's like I can't. I'm struggling enough to see at a certain distance. I have been wearing readers lately, okay, the little cheater things. Try to make myself not wear them because I want to avoid it as long as I can. But, you know, hey, you got to do what you got to do to see. But I don't think even in my younger days I could see clearly that close. <laughs> Ooh, I think I have a scripture I want to put on here. I gotta think of what it is. I gotta think of the rest of it so I can. Okay. Zoe she says she doesn't like part twos and she doesn't like when they're not finished. So thank y'all for bearing with me. And I've been almost an hour, y'all. I didn't intend for it to be that long. And I probably would be further along if I hadn't spent the first like 10 to 15 minutes explaining a painted prayer even though i'm not doing one tonight but i did tell y'all what y'all need to do if you want to paint along with us tomorrow you just need some mixed media paper or uh, a canvas and i would say bigger than a eight, than a regular sheet of paper if you've got it because unless you're really good at writing really small let's just put it that because I'm not really good at writing really small. So I want something a little bigger for mine. So I'm doing at least an 11 by 14 size. And I haven't figured out what I'm doing yet, but I'm going to do an 11 by 14. At least. Because I've got some paper and I could possibly frame it got a couple of pieces of glass sitting around that I could potentially do it on but to paint on glass you got to be able to paint backwards some things and I'm like I'm not really sure I'm ready for more backwards painting I'm doing good to be painting the, today Okay, so masterpiece, I may have to show y'all a, a picture after I get that written on there, anything written on it, because I'm not, I'm not freehanding, I'll either cut me a stencil or I'll write, print me out a tracer, one of the two, and trace it in there where I want it, because I just... This looks too pretty to mess up. What do you think? Because <laughs> if I tried to write it, it would be like, mm, not so great. I get so sad when I do when I when I make myself or I see something that like especially my daughter she's really talented when she gives herself the time and then she gets to the end of a project and she rushes through something and instead of taking time and 
it just kind of it's still well done it's just not as awe to me as it could be does that make sense i don't want to take away from it and i don't hope i hope she doesn't hear this and think i'm being ugly that's not what i mean at all i just mean there's been several things she's done and things that i've done that i get in a hurry toward the end and i rush it and it just kind of falls flat for me it's not bad but I know for a fact if I'd slowed down and because I've done it a second time and I've slowed down and done it better and it just turns out so much prettier so lessons have to be learned though okay almost to the end of this But yeah, I found this one in particular at Walmart, this cutout in particular, Tammy. But I know I found them at Michael's because I thought about buying some more because I thought, well, I could do a class with the Texas and we could do whatever it was I was planning on doing on them. We could put the state flag on there. I've done that before. In fact, I was debating putting the state flag on this and then putting the blue bonnets in front of it. Maybe a yellow rose or something on it. But I decided against it. And I'm doing some darker colors around the outside because I wanted it to kind of add to the shadow. You know how the, you buy the laser etched stuff nowadays and it's all... Got that really darker edge around it since I don't have a laser etched anything here right now. Okay. Now. I've seen the ones at Walmart for your state. Yeah. Well, and I think think I might have seen because I'm we're right next to Louisiana so I'm thinking I might have seen a Louisiana at Hobby Lobby no Michaels at Michaels the one time I looked no I haven't looked I bought this 2017 2018 2017 before I ever got into painting I'd used a ruler and painted the basic color here and there and cut some vinyl and put it on there and made a gift for a friend and I wanted a backup just in case. <laughs> I was like, we are not, not having a backup. Because I knew I think Zoe's getting on to her neck pup. We're going to see if we can make this kind of Touch up our, our little areas here around that edge where the dark blue kind of bled over more than I wanted it to. Way heavier than I wanted it to be. Way heavier than I wanted it to be. Come on. Smooth out. Smooth out. <laughs> there we go. Not the right kind of sponge for this job. Not the right kind of sponge. But the other one I'd already put in the water. Okay, guys. So, I'm going to switch cameras. And here we go. I'm going to put God's masterpiece, or there's a scripture that talks about his handiwork is visible. I think it's Psalm, in Psalm somewhere. I'll, I'll look it up. And I may do that on here. I may put the Psalm on there. That, that part of that Psalm, that verse on here. 
Well, thank y'all for joining me and th hanging out with me. I had lots of fun talking with y'all tonight. Um, I look forward to seeing y'all tomorrow night at 8 Central. 9 Eastern. Yeah, his handiwork. Yep, his handiwork. There's a scripture with that in there that I think I'm going to do. Um, all right. Tomorrow night, we're doing a painted prayer or something along that lines where we're going to have a scripture in mind. So if you have a scripture and you want to paint along something in your mind that you want to see on, on your wall, uh, I told you to grab a canvas or a paint, uh, a, a paper, either watercolor paper or a canvas, uh, board or something those can be framed typically um but you need a canvas you need three shades of paint for your background just so you've got some variety in there if you want it um good night tammy and if you want you need either black or white maybe both depending on what after you so you have them handy so that you can put your verse I would go and write whatever verse or scripture you want to do and, and print it out so you've got it in front of you. And you either uh, take pencil and rub it on the back of it to, to do a tracer or you have some carbon paper or some uh, graphite paper that you can use underneath it to trace it out. And then you're ready to rock and roll with us tomorrow night. And I'll see y'all then.